All right, so I'm Dan Calabrese, so I'm a prana. This is the doctor that I work with. You can introduce yourself. And your Hi, I'm Dr. George Shapiro. One of my uh, specialties are in hormone replacement therapy. Uh, I'm a cardiologist as well, an internist. Uh, lately, we've been focusing on some of the side effects of hormones. Uh, Dan was asking me uh, what happens if we take too much of certain hormones, specifically testosterone. So I'm going to uh, do a brief uh, overview of, uh, of the prostate, the bladder, and, and a small animation of what occurs when uh, we're doing too much uh, hormones. Uh, particularly most of our patients are on maybe 60 milligrams twice a week to 80 milligrams twice a week, no more than 200 milligrams of testosterone a week. Um, the word out there in the gyms and certain bodybuilders think that you know more is better so let me show you what happens when you take too much testosterone specifically on the prostate so so as we focus in on uh, this uh, animation uh, this is the urinary bladder and here's the prostate this is the urethra where urine comes out and and as we inject testosterone the receptors in the prostate and you can focus in on right here you can see that the the prostate tissue enlarges and starts to impinge and push on the urethra. So as, you, as urinary flow comes out, it's being impeded. And you can just see what happens. So if you notice a lot of people who are taking too much testosterone, they're constantly urinating because they're unable to get flow. So they always have the urge to urinate. But one of the most important things is they have something called retrograde ejaculation. They're unable to ejaculate. Everything comes backwards. So if you look at it, again, normal flow, and this occurs when you have too much testosterone causing an increase in what we call dihydrotestosterone which goes to the prostate and enlarges it so you really don't want that you want to keep your DHT levels below 100 but above 75 so if this got closed off and someone's prostate was enlarged do they have trouble getting an erection too? yes absolutely because it would be lack of blood flow correct and when they pee you said the stream another time you talked you said the stream would be weaker weak stream it's someone who ha it's like an old man you become a, you take a young guy and you basically make them into an old man with a large prostate artificially by taking too much testosterone that breaks down to too much dihydrotestosterone so you know i can pee you know a lot of my friends can pee and you know we have competitors even as physique competitors i know that do you know three four up to six hundred milligrams of testosterone a week Right. So, you know, people could be on that much testosterone. It's wrong. It's, it's too much. It's like a sink that overflows. It gets wasted and it goes right here to the prostate. In addition, it also goes to breast tissue to cause gynecomastia. So when everybody's doing it on their own just guessing how their body's, you know, reacting to it, there's no way to really understand what's happening inside your body other than a blood test. Blood tests are very important. Uh, also symptoms. But, you know, uh, typical bodybuilders take way too much testosterone, 10 times the normal dose. It affects dihydrotestosterone that kills hair, so you have hair loss, enlarged prostate, and breast tissue, gynecomastia. And it messes up your ability to get an erection, which so you can have less testosterone in your body. Not know. only in erectile problems, but you have retrograde ejaculation. You can't ejaculate, and it goes backwards into the bladder. And if you see, you can actually look at the flow here. Look what happens. You're, it's, nothing can come out. It's like blocked. So it's not the right thing to do. So it's very important to monitor your levels, monitor the metabolites like dihydrotestosterone and estrogen as well. And while we're here real quick, you know, a lot of people understand that you know, women have testosterone and that women's testosterone has to be within a certain range too. And we had a certain client who got her levels checked and her testosterone was 10. And just tell us some of the dangers of you know, women have too low of testosterone as well. Yeah, testosterone is a very important hormone for men and women. Uh, depression uh, is very common in men and women with low testosterone. Testosterone also enhances your brain activity, how sharp you are, focused, edge. Uh, it gives you better muscle tone, obviously. Uh, your metabolism is increased. You feel that drive. You start using your brain more. Uh, you know, testosterone is a very important hormone. There's some new data to show that low testosterone is now a risk factor for premature atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. So low testosterone is not great for the heart. There's been a lot of literature regarding testosterone. Uh, uh, the newer data just published does not uh, show any increased risk of heart attacks or strokes. Uh, also low testosterone is now a problem with uh, prostate cancer. You want to have uh, protection for prostate cancer. You want your levels to be elevated. Uh, recent studies out of Harvard Medical School, Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler uh, published some recent data looking at testosterone in the prostate. So as, as professionals, we, we look at the science behind it, and the science is key. So that's what we follow, these guidelines. Uh, specifically for women, though, women need less levels than men. 
Uh, there's a great article on the myths of testosterone for women. I'll I'll actually forward that to you so you can share. What should show a woman's your, level your be and what should a man's level be in a range? We we really focus on the free testosterone. The free testosterone for women we'd like around 10. Uh, total for women around 100. For men, uh, anywhere between 800 and 1100 range is uh, now considered to be the norm and free testosterone for men around 250. I know, I know a lot of guys too that have been on testosterone, the levels are really high and they say I don't have a sex drive, I don't feel well and then we were talking that their free testosterone, a lot of doctors don't check that. So even though they have high total tests, their free test is lower and they don't feel the benefits of the testosterone being bound up. So that's something we should check for because there's ways that you can free testosterone and make it more readily available in the Correct. body as that, well. Yeah, that's why it's so important to look at testosterone and the bound form of testosterone and what's unbound. But you mentioned something before about libido. Libido has a lot to do with estrogen levels. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people in the gyms who, who work out take an estrogen blocker, a Remadex, a Nastrozole, Femara, but they take it every day. The problem is it blocks your estrogen so you have muscle aches, your bones start to get soft, you have uh, basically vasoconstriction of your coronary arteries, so your increased risk of heart attack with low estrogen levels. Estrogen is protective. It's a vasodilator. It's important for your libido, more important than testosterone, believe it or not. It's just and strange. estrogen protects your bones and keeps, you, keeps your posture high. You don't get frail. You don't start getting a bone, a bone loss, and you don't start shrinking. So, so estrogen is important. Usually we, we want to keep your estrogen levels below 35. Uh, we don't want to keep them below 10, and, and a lot of men who take estrogen the wrong way are taking a blocker every single day, which is really not the way to do it. Yeah, we know a lot of people that do that, you know, dry out before a show and different things like that. So another reason, like you said, you want to get your levels checked during all phases of competition, before and after, make sure you're not doing, you know, permanent damage to your body. So, you know, this is a great health talk today. We're going to try to do these a little bit more regularly to try to get information out there to the general public. Um, if someone wants to make an appointment with you, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, probably, uh, you know, through you, you can probably set that up because we have a program we're setting up together mm -hmm. between nutrition, exercise. So I have a link on my website that you can click through, schedule an appointment. He's two floors up from me, so a lot of clients could come in when they come in and visit the gym. You know, we could also schedule uh, an appointment for a consultation and possibly a blood test. So uh, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you.